a quick video on food chains and feeding relationships. So this is related to your ecology unit of work. So just a quick spec check. So today we are going to be looking at feeding relationships within a community. It can be represented as food chains. So we'll talk about the different stages of different food chains and what do they show us. And then we're going to talk a bit about the um, interdependence of species uh, between each other in terms of food webs. So very quickly, a food chain, it shows what's eaten by what in an ecosystem. Now, it's really important to state that food chains, all food chains on planet Earth, start with a producer. So producers, they make their own food using energy from the sun. So that is better known as photosynthesis. So producers are usually green plants or algae. So obviously organisms each eat each other. So we have uh, we obviously have herbivores, uh, carnivores, omnivores, and basically this energy from sunlight that's been transferred into the biomass of the plant is then transferred to other species. So for example, primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, and so forth. Um, and the energy is transferred through living organisms when organisms eat each other. And eventually those organisms will die and they'll be decomposed by detritivores and microbes. And then the cycle can be, begin again. But the key thing is the sun. So the energy from the sun is being transferred into uh, biomass by the plant. And then that travels through the food chain. Okay, so what we have here, here is a four level uh, food chain. And as you can see, energy is moving through the food chain. So the first thing is the producer in this case is the tree. So that's known as the producer. The, the caterpillar is going to eat the leaves of the tree and that's known as a herbivore. The blue tit eats the caterpillar, known as an omnivore because blue tits also eat seeds. And then the sparrowhawk is a carnivore now, um, there are different levels in this food chain. So you have the first level is the producer. Then you have what we call the primary consumer. So that's the first organism that consumes the producer, in this case, the caterpillar, and it's always a herbivore. And then you've got the secondary consumer, which in this case is the blue tit. And then the carnivore is known as a tertiary consumer or even an apex predator. Now, um, obviously this is a simplified food chain um, there's lots of different species that are going to be feeding off the tree so lots of different herbivores and therefore you're going to have lots of different carnivores or omnivores um, and so forth um, but one thing you'll notice as well in terms of populations is there's there's obviously one tree but there's lots of caterpillars but there'll be less blue tits than caterpillars and less sparrowhawks than blue tits. And the reason being is that energy is flowing through the ecosystem. Not all of the energy is being transferred into the biomass of the next consumer. Um, and that's something we'll be looking at later in terms of how energy is transferred and it's not all transferred into the biomass of the organism. Okay, so I hope you were listening carefully. If you were, then I would like you to just recap what I've just spoken about food chains. So try not to look back on what I've just said, um, but uh, I'll just move that out of the way. There you go. Um, and so I'd like you to pause the video and have a go yourself at remembering all of the terms, all of the labels and the food chain. OK, so just to recap, here you go. So this is what it should have looked like. Now, obviously, as I said, food chains are, uh, are quite simplified. And so we can, uh, for example, in this example, this is a um, eco. This is a, a food web in a woodland. So you can see there is many different species. And again, this food web is not complete. There will be many, many more organisms involved in a woodland. Uh, food web 
but the key thing is that each species depends on other species for their survival so this is known as interdependence so if there's any major changes in uh, populations of one species maybe there's a disease or they are become extinct for um, a, a no apparent reason or maybe there's a climatic change then this can have far-reaching effects so in this food web, you can see that you've got your producers. So in this case, the oak leaves from an oak tree and you've got grass and then you have primary consumers. So the primary consumers in this case are the snails, the earthworm, vole and rabbit. The secondary consumers uh, that eat the primary consumers are hedgehogs and weasels and um, hedgehogs and weasels and owls. And then you've got the um, tertiary consumer in this case is the fox so the fox eats the weasel or hedgehog and it also eats rabbits as well okay so here's a quick task what I'd like you to try and do is see what will happen if the fox population decreases due to a disease so I'd like you to try and give a reason for each change so look through the food web decide on your answer i'd like you to write down that answer and then we'll go through in a minute so again please pause the video now okay so let's have a look at the answer so uh, the fox population will decrease so the first thing is the hedgehog populations are going to increase as the less are going to be eaten by the foxes because the fox population has decreased the weasel population will do the same it will increase Therefore, the primary consumers, the snail, the earthworm, the vole and the rabbit populations will decrease as more is eaten by uh, increased populations of hedgehogs and weasels. The rabbit population may not uh, decrease as much because there's less foxes. So um, it depends how much we, how um, large the weasel population is. And then the owl population may decrease as well as there's more competition uh, from the weasels to eat the voles and then there's an increased amount of producers um, as primary consumer populations decrease so there's lots and lots of different things going on there but that gives you an idea of the type of exam question they could ask related to the topic so that covers food chains and feeding relationships I hope you found that uh, video useful. Please do subscribe if you haven't already to uh, Dr. Biology and there'll be more videos coming soon.